Happy corporate holiday, which encourages lonely people to off themselves and shorten that rounding error, ladies and gentlemen. To those of you spending a productive evening with your significant other, uh, producing, fair enough. But as for the rest of us lonely scrubs, don't worry, there is always tragic love tales from mythology to trigger our schadenfreude and make us feel much better. That and VTubers, and they can never take those away from us. Our story today begins like all good love stories, with incest. And we're talking the Sonny Bean incest here, not the tame Franklin Roosevelt incest. So one day, just for shits and giggles I guess, goddess of love Aphrodite cast her magic on the unsuspecting Princess Myra, who in turn fell in love with her father, King Sinurus. Myra attempted to suppress these feelings of lust for as long as she could, until one day, as if these sets of circumstances were written by a producer from Bang Bros, her mother, Queen Centuries, had to go out of town for a week, leaving her husband totally alone and needy within the palace. Sneaking into his bedroom under the cover of darkness, Myra approached the king under the guise of being a servant girl, then crawls over him in the bed and starts and then the king got up and he took out his and the sheets were completely soiled by the absolute He took his fist and then With a fucking flamingo and a pogo stick like they used to do back in the Greek ages, baby so yeah, he knocked up his own daughter. Eventually, the king got curious as to what he was sticking his junk into. So he decided on the ninth night of this affair to light a candle in the room, revealing that his handmaid mistress was in fact his own daughter. Disgusted and very pissed off, King Senyurus chases his own daughter around the castle, sword in hand. A uh, metallic one this time. Myra is able to escape, but cannot live with the guilt of what she had done. Well, actually, scratch that, she could not live with the fact that she had been caught, and pleaded with the gods to pass appropriate judgment upon her. Because evidently, incest is a grave sin in the eyes of the Greek gods, even though each and every one of them is a byproduct of incest themselves, and they continue to bring a date to the family reunion. But I digress. Myra's prayers are eventually heard by Gaia, the personification of the Earth, who transforms her into a tree, wherein the son she was carrying was saved by Lucina, according to Latin writer Ovid in 8 AD. Now, Lucina is an honorific Roman title usually associated with aiding in childbirth. For this reason, Lucina is typically depicted as either Hera, or Juno as the Romans might have called her, or Artemis aka Diana. However, some other variations of the myth profess it was Aphrodite herself who retrieved the infant from Myra's tree pussy before tossing him out to go and live with Persephone in the underworld. Unsurprisingly, this child is our main focus for today's video. So one might think that with his grandfather also being his father, Adonis would look a little something like this. <laughs> But, in actuality, Adonis would grow up to become one of the most handsome and fair mortals in all of ancient Greece. But before we get into that, we need to ascertain Adonis's real origins. Because believe it or not, he is not originally a Greek figure. Adonis comes from the Phoenician word Adonai, which was a title given to nobility, roughly equivalent to saying my lord in English. Adonai was the Phoenician god of fertility among vegetation. It's very likely that Adonai was derived from the Mesopotamian god Tammuz, who was the god of shepherds, and big surprise here, fertility. Because he was a Phoenician deity of a sizable cult, it's unsurprising that Adonai would be noted in the Old Testament of the Bible. Though under Tammuz's name, whether that be through a mistranslation or cultural misunderstanding is unclear. There is still some speculation that Adonai may have been an avatar of the Ugarit god Baal, who was, in accordance, the god of weather, war, and... Oh, would you look at that? Fertility. Isn't it nice and convenient that all of these Mediterranean faiths are just as inbred as Adonis himself? Anyway, because the Greeks weren't done being weird with us yet, Persephone, who keep in mind is Adonis' adoptive mother, 
starts lusting after him, as well as Aphrodite, the cause of all this trouble in the first place. Both of these goddesses were married, although both were equally unhappy with who they ended up with, so they decided to feud over who gets this cute little incest boy's dongle. Zeus, the king of the gods, eventually decides that enough is enough and sets up a compromise which is eerily similar to the one he made of Persephone back during the whole Underworld Undertaker ordeal. Adonis would be forced to spend the first four months in the Underworld with Persephone, and the second with Aphrodite, and let him choose for himself who he wanted to shack up with for the last four months of the year. Though he would commonly choose Aphrodite, because holy shit, who wouldn't? However, that's not to say that these were Adonis' only lovers, because ancient Greece was literally the gayest place on Earth. Adonis was also getting some love from Apollo, Heracles, and Dionysus. They even went out of their way to tell us that Adonis was a receiver and not a pitcher. If you catch my drift. Nope. In any case, everyone was happy with this arrangement, except for literally everyone else. Ares, the god of war and the man most commonly depicted as Aphrodite's lover, even though she's married to his brother Hephaestus, was jealous that his girlfriend slash sister slash lady aunt was fucking another dude when he was the one who was supposed to be doing the cucking around here. So he sent a wild boar to gore Adonis while he was out on a hunting trip. However, we do have some conflicting accounts as to who sent the boar. Most profess it was Ares, while some others say that it was Apollo or possibly even Artemis. But I think we're forgetting the most likely suspect of all, Hades. Think about it. Hades' wife is Persephone, and he really doesn't fuck around at all like all the other gods do despite the fact that she's really only his wife for six months out of the whole year. So imagine you're Hades. Your brother decides that your wife, who you rightfully stole, gets to screw around with some other cute inbred little twink four out of the six months of visitation you get with her. Meanwhile, you're the most abstinent motherfucker in the whole damn pantheon. Frankly, I would have sent the entire Legion of Hell after him. Regardless of who did it, Adonis dies in Aphrodite's arms, his blood spilling out and mixing with her tears to germinate the first of the Anemone flowers, and then Aphrodite declared that Adonis' death would be remembered every year during the midsummer by the women of Athens, who would plant gardens in his honor, then stick the poor plants on the roofs of their houses so that the sun would kill them, then they would go outside to rip each other's clothes off and violently smack their boobs around. Which, if you know anything about Athens back in the day, was actually pretty tame behavior. And there you have it, gentlemen and scarce amount of ladies. A story of incest, betrayal, more incest, women being turned into trees and wild animals impaling scrawny man whores with their tusks. The absolute perfect story to celebrate Valentine's Day with, well, it's going about as well as my day is. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're new here and want to stay up to date with all the other shit that I do on this channel, why not subscribe and ring the bell icon so future videos can be delivered straight to your subscription feed? Got some spare change lying around because you're a sad loser who's watching mythology videos on Valentine's Day? Why not sign up for my Patreon and help me keep this channel afloat and help yourself to some extra content? Until next time, folks, my name is Messiahs of Mythology, and please don't kill yourself. I don't care what today is, just get over it. And always remember to have a God's blessed day.